My name is Alan Murphy, and I'm the president of Bluco Brands, best known for our industry-leading product, Barbicide. On behalf of everyone here at Bluco Brands, thank you for choosing us as your partner in sanitation and disinfection, ensuring your safety and your client's safety on a daily basis. Today, I want to share with you the importance of proper sanitation and disinfection. We have traveled around the world, speaking with literally thousands of students, educators, and practitioners. And through those discussions and listening sessions, we have developed the message I want to deliver today. We have learned that cosmetologists aren't taking sanitation and disinfection seriously enough. Routinely, we hear it is time consuming and takes away from providing client services. And we understand that. That's why we are developing standard operating procedures and introducing new products reflecting today's demands of a busy, active, and successful establishment. We also hear that learning about proper sanitation and disinfection tends to be a boring topic. And we're working to address that as well. In fact, this presentation is an excellent example of how we are trying to deliver this information in a way that's quick, easy, and readily available. In a format, the way you want it. Finally, we recognize that because I said so, or it's the law, isn't working. So let's turn things around a bit and approach this from another angle. Let's compare the healthcare industry and your salon. There are a couple of areas that are more similar than you think. In both healthcare and in your salon, there is a high degree of person to person contact. In fact, some have argued there is more person to person contact by you than a nurse. In both healthcare and your salon, there is unrestricted public access. Anyone can walk into an emergency room and get care, just as anyone can walk into your salon for a service. In fact, many salons have a sign in their window that reads, walk-ins welcome. Basically, they're saying, we have no idea where you've been, we have no idea who you've been with or what you may have. But please, sit down in one of our chairs and let one of our cos cosmetologists touch you for the next 30 to 45 minutes. Unfortunately, that's where the similarities end. In healthcare, it is expected by both the provider and the patient that rubber gloves be worn. In your salon, the rubber gloves make your job more difficult, if not impossible. However, the biggest difference, and the one that can have the biggest impact, is access to a client or patient's medical history. Healthcare providers have full access to a patient's medical history. And, as we all know, a trip to the doctor always begins by filling out a lengthy questionnaire, which we dutifully answer, regardless of how sensitive or personal the questions may be. In your salon, no such luck. I'm reminded of a conversation I had with a cosmetologist in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. After giving a presentation similar to this one, she approached me and I could see she was upset. After a moment of hesitation, she shared with me a regular client of more than 15 years had recently died. And it wasn't until after her death she learned that this longtime client had hepatitis B. With this in comparison in mind, are you ready to take this topic a little more seriously? Are you willing to take a little more time out of your day to follow the proper operating procedures? Let's talk about what you need to do to better protect yourself and your clients. Start by following what is known in healthcare as universal precautions. Simply stated, this means assume everyone you come in contact with has something 
and you have something as well. With this in mind, how would you proceed? It's really very simple, and I can break it down into two simple steps. First, clean or sanitize. This is the first step to proper disinfection and removes the visible dirt and debris from the items or surfaces you intend to disinfect. This follows the basic principle that you cannot disinfect a dirty surface. The two products we offer for this first step include the iconic ship shape comb and brush cleaner and our new ship shape surface and appliance cleaner. Remember, cleaned but not disinfected. Disinfection is the next step. Every state requires the use of an EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant. Some states require the use of a product proven to be tuberculocidal and some states do not. It's important to know what your state requirements are and if you don't know or have any questions regarding your state's requirements, please feel free to contact us at any time. Barbicide is our EPA registered hospital grade disinfectant and Barbicide Plus is our product that meets the tuberculosidal requirements. We also offer two other products that are EPA registered hospital grade disinfectants and those include our Barbicide wipes and our classic clipper disinfectant, Clipperside. And that's a great lead in to another important aspect of EPA registered hospital grade disinfectants. Read and understand the label. Follow the label's mixing instructions and maintain the level label's required contact time. Contact time is defined by the amount of moist time or how long the surface needs to remain wet via immersion, spray, or wipes. The amount of time re killed, required to kill all the pathogens listed on the label. Barbicide, Barbicide Plus, and Clipperside are 10 minutes, as are most of the other EPA registered hospital grade disinfectants, including the over-the-counter disinfectants you use at home. Are you doing this at home? Are you spraying your countertops and letting it stay wet for 10 minutes? Or are you just spraying and immediately wiping it up? Most likely not. The barbicide wipes are unique in that their contact time is only two minutes for most pathogens and three minutes to be tuberculocidal. Again, in comparison, the over-the-counter wipes the very wipes you may be using at home can range anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. Regardless, if you are immersing, spraying, or wiping in your establishment or at home, if you're not reading the label and following the instructions to disinfect, not sanitize, as we learned earlier, sanitize only means to clean, but follow the rules to disinfect you are not protecting yourself, your family, or your clients, and quite frankly, wasting money. Okay, how am I doing? I certainly hope I'm not boring you, and given this is the first time I've ever tried doing something like this, you may be laughing, but that's okay. In the changing world we live today, I just want you to understand how important this subject is. So let's talk about what's changing. Let's talk about the two types of pathogens that are creating the most concern around the world, bacteria and viruses. Bacteria are single cell microorganisms that can only be seen through a microscope. They thrive in warm, moist, dark places, and does that sound familiar? Are there areas you can identify within your salon that offer that type of environment? I would think a towel bin fits that description pretty well. A single bacteria cell can produce 16 million copies of itself in only 12 hours. So back to the towel bin. If there is just one bacteria cell in that bin, when you open your establishment at 9 a.m., by the time you close at the end of the day at 9 p.m., 
that one cell has made 16 million copies of itself. But really, that's not even half the concern. The really alarming aspect of bacteria is its ability to mutate, becoming difficult, if not impossible, to kill with today's antibiotics. These bacteria are known medically as multiple drug resistant organisms, or MDROs. These include infections such as drug resistant streptococcus, VRE, C. diff, and the most common and highest risk in your establishment, MRSA. According to the CDC, more people in the U.S. die every year from MRSA than AIDS. And if you think this is something that couldn't possibly affect you, you're wrong. Let me share a couple of examples. A gentleman in Ohio recently died of a MRSA infection on the back of his neck, contracted from a clipper. A young mother in Florida is scarred for life on her face from a MRSA infection contracted through the practice of double dipping during an eyebrow waxing. MRSA is now part of our everyday society and because of that I can assure you that every day someone walks into your salon carrying the MRSA bacteria. Do you remember the phrase universal precautions? Assume that everyone has something? This is a perfect time to think of that. Now, let's talk about the other common type of pathogen, the virus. Viruses are disease-causing agents that are many times smaller than bacteria. They enter into healthy cells, grow to maturity, reproduce, often destroying the cell. Viruses thrive on hard, dry surfaces, so really, no surface in your salon is safe. Moist, wet, dark, hard, dry. Examples of viruses that are of particular concern would be the influenza virus or the flu virus, such as H1N1. Up to 20% of the U.S. population gets seasonal flu, with annual flu-related deaths greater than 48,000 individuals. Also, the human papillomavirus, HIV, hepatitis, and even the common cold. We've talked a lot about what we know, but sometimes we don't know what we don't know. Like the cosmetologist in South Dakota and her story that I shared with you earlier. So let's take the last few minutes to discuss the high-risk client and the types of things to look for that put these clients at risk. Typically, these clients could have an immune system impaired by medication or disease, or have had a surgical or medical intervention. This would include diabetics, those undergoing chemotherapy, breast cancer survivors, and in the case of my own father, those who have received the gift of life through an organ transplant. The high-risk client can be someone who doesn't even realize themselves that they are at a higher risk. They're harboring a virus that is currently inactive, or they have an illness that is undiagnosed. Those who have traveled outside the country recently, and those who are in a high-risk occupation, such as a nurse, are all potential high-risk clients. But again, it falls to being committed to the universal precaution statement and following the basic standard operating procedures of sanitation and disinfection. Let me close by sharing with you and recapping the rules to live by at both work and home. First, clean and disinfect for every client every time. Maintain an adequate stock of your favorite disinfecting products and of course I trust that your list includes Barbicide or Barbicide Plus where required, Clipperside, Barbicide wipes, as well as maintaining a stock of your cleaning supplies, ShipShape comb and brush cleaner, and ShipShape surface and appliance cleaner. Second, read and understand the labels. Third, increase the disinfection of common use surfaces during high risk times, such as the flu season. I'll end it there. My goal today isn't to scare you, but to inform you. Rest assured, 
If you follow these three simple rules, you will be providing a safe environment for yourself and for every client every time. Again, on behalf of everyone here at Blue Co Brands, thank you for choosing us as your partner in sanitation and disinfection. Please feel free to contact us at any time if you have any questions. You can reach us at 1-800-222-8160 or via the web at www.barbicide.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Now go out and make it a successful, healthy day for you, your clients, and the ones you love. Thanks for listening.